Hey y'all, welcome back. So we talked about the new start screen experience on Windows 11, we talked about app experience on Windows 11, and finally we're here to talk about gestures on Windows 11 through the Microsoft Surface Pro X. Now, notably, the gesture navigation on Windows 10 was never quite great. There were some good interactions, but none of them really felt complete, and it felt like Microsoft was slowly falling behind to other mobile operating systems. Since gestures are now so core to the way that we interact with our tablets and phones, I really think Microsoft had to go big with Windows 11. And you'll see in the upcoming video that I had some positives and some negatives. So let's just get right into it. Now, one thing that has changed a little bit is the swipe gestures. So, so beforehand, swiping from the right would bring out the entire bar for notifications and quick settings. And now it looks like swiping from the right will only bring out your calendar and any notifications would pop up right here if I had any, which is a little bit of a bummer, which means that quick settings are instead accessible by pressing one of these three icons down here, which is very odd. It, it doesn't feel like a good experience when I want to control something other than Wi-Fi speakers or the battery status. And I click here in order to get it. So brightness, for example, is hidden in these controls where on the surface, it's not completely obvious that would be hidden there. Speaker volume is also hidden there, which makes sense. And then obviously all your quick settings. Now, these quick settings are customizable, which is nice. So I can basically add more quick settings as I see fit. The default quick settings are these six, which are um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, which I don't know if that's the case on other Windows 10 device, Windows 11 devices, but obviously it only matters on products like the Surface Pro X. Airplane mode, which I feel is duplicative, again, for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Priority only, this is notification controls and accessibility, which I will admit that I'm not going to use. So I'm gonna add on something else. So we talked about the gestures on the right side. Now let's talk about the gestures on the left side. So Microsoft did a lot to, to claim that this was this massive change in the way that you experience Windows, because while beforehand there were live tiles, now instead there are basically smart tiles that create widgets for different things that it thinks that you might be interested in. Now, this is all using AI, I assume, and whatever data they gather on you. But I feel like maybe I haven't shared enough data with Microsoft because frankly, I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine who wants to be seeing all of this. It feels like, okay, here. So here's Snoop Dogg with, I, I can't tell what that is in his hand, some sort of food. There's a lot of Trump. There's a lot of uh, other politicians like AOC. I, I, I feel like this is just kind of everything that Microsoft has from MSN's webpage just spat out onto this, which I cannot, cannot imagine going through for days on end trying to clear out all the stuff that I don't want to see. Because um, mostly it's everything. Uh, like there's very little things that I've seen here on, uh, on here that I'm really truly interested in. American Pickers star Mike Wolf's wife, Jody, files for divorce after nearly nine years of marriage. This is very, very important news. I, I cannot believe I would have gone without knowing it had I not swiped from the left. And here's 15 cute basics that I need in my closet, all under $40 from H&M. It's just, it feels like a mix between like spammy ads and quote unquote news, right? Florida couple sues woke Catholic school to rescind $1.3 million donation. I, I can't believe it. I, I honestly, it feels it's, it's literally just the MSN webpage. I can even open up the MSN webpage and these are probably very, very similar. It's the exact same thing. So basically we took what was already on the edge webpage, uh, edge homepage, and have, we've now ported it to the left switch on, there it is on windows 11. I can't express how frustrated I am about this change to the left swipe because Microsoft has never really been great for making a tablet experience when it comes to Windows 10, but they claim that Windows 11 is a better tablet experience. And here's the proof, right? You've got now everything aligned across the bottom for tablets, I assume, and then your file explorer is now this. But here's my problem, right? Swiping in from the left now opens sometimes 
There we go. Now opens this glass bar, whereas beforehand, it notably opens your task view or whatever you want to call this. And this was a very, very easy way to get to all your applications. It was never very efficient or is never very um, refined in Windows 10. It always stuttered a whole bunch depending on how many applications you had open, but it at least was an easy way to get through applications. On Windows 8, it was an easy way to switch between applications. It was basically like an alt tab button. And I miss that like heck. I really want that to come back. But instead, now we've got this glass pane with all of this information that I frankly couldn't give any crap about. Bing is somehow a cleaner homepage than Microsoft Edge default homepage. So if you personally prefer the default homepage on Microsoft Edge, please let me know it down in the comments because I've never met anyone who would say that. But I'm curious if there is anyone that prefers it over something as simple as like Bing's homepage. Okay, finally, let's talk about some of the gestures you used to be able to use on Windows 10 to control your open application. So from Windows 8, they started with this whole swipe down from the top. It's gone. Swiping down from the top to the bottom on Windows 8 and Windows 10 in tablet mode allowed you to quickly close an application. It is no longer here. I cannot believe it. It is gone. It is one of the best features that we got from Windows 8 and Windows RT. It is now gone. Similarly, swiping down from the top and then dragging over to the side, this thankfully is not gone. Obviously, Windows prides itself on easily being able to multitask. It is still one of the best interactions that I have. Again, like being able to control applications and put them into different places uh, is always a strong suit for Microsoft. Though, I don't know what this is. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so now hopefully. Okay, I can select each of my applications to show up in each of these uh, quadrants, which is pretty cool. This is that was always always existent on Windows 10. But I would generally access it by basically hitting the Windows left key and then Windows down and then Windows left, Windows up in order to control each of the, the tabs and each of the applications and put them into their place. Now, if, um, if it wasn't obvious, oh gosh. Well, it's not perfect, but okay. So I'm going to take this application. I'm going to put it left. I'm going to, I'm going to take this app. <laughs> I'm going to take this application. I'm going to move it left. I'm going to move it up. Come on. There we go. Now it shows me this menu for selecting other applications. I'm going to select File Explorer. I don't, I really don't get it. Like, this is not intuitive at all. So this might just be general bugginess with Windows 11. I mean, this is still a beta, but I. <laughs> I'm a little worried, to be honest. I'm a little worried. I came into this with a very positive attitude because I think Windows 10 was getting a little long in the tooth and I think it could use a refresh. I don't generally have a negative as negative an attitude on any sort of Windows updates or changes to Windows that a lot of a lot of people do. So I was excited to see something different, especially something that they claimed was so tablet focused. But after this experience alone, I'm starting like I'm really starting to get sour about this experience because Microsoft really needs to be able to create a good tablet operating system because because they've been so far ahead in terms of two in ones for the past 10 years. Like the Microsoft Surface, honestly, in my mind, was one of the biggest advancements in like portable personal computing in the last 10 years, if not like longer than that. And so Microsoft had the lead. All they needed to do was make a usable tablet operating system. They've claimed that Windows 11 is that, and I'm not quite sure that's the case. So notably, one big change with Windows 11 is that now gestures are the same as the experience that you'd get using a trackpad, which is very odd, but kind of a welcome change. I'm interested to see on how this works in practice. So for example, if you do a three finger swipe up from the bottom, 
then you're going to go right into the app switcher, which is pretty cool and pretty quick. So that experience is good. Three finger swipe up. Yep. And then similarly, uh, doing a three finger swipe to the left should be allow you to switch between applications. Now, notably, the animation is uh, is not great. I mean, it still feels a little stuttery, but it's fast. And I guess it's just as fast as the Windows 8 experience of swiping in from the side. I'm still not happy about this whole situation, but I guess this is a good compromise. And notably, I think this is probably one of the kind of most intuitive experiences, switching between a desktop experience or a laptop experience and a tablet experience. Because generally, if you're familiar with those gestures, then e being able to easily do that on the screen is pretty awesome. Now, and I wish they had this the whole time, um, but it's nice, it's great. It's probably the most positive I've been on this video so far. Overall, my experience with Windows 11 gestures so far are mixed. I like the three finger gestures to open all applications or swipe between applications, but the usage of a left swipe in order to bring in the widgets bar is not the right usage for me. But we'll have to see if Microsoft keeps all these gestures throughout the final production of Windows 11, which will be seen later this year. Until then, I'm going to continue to cover any new changes that come to the Windows 11 beta program, so be sure to get subscribed if you aren't already. If you haven't checked out my other videos covering Windows 11, be sure to check them out in this playlist. And thank you for watching, and be sure to get subscribed if you like more of this content. I will catch you in the next one.